you're coming. End of the end of the age. Where will these things be? Two things. Where will these things be? What will be the sign of your coming? End of the end of the age. And Jesus answered and said to them, I will connect the two verses. Take heed that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and many will, uh, will deceive many. Many will be deceived. I want you to take note of that. Many will be deceived. And that includes believers. I want you to understand why many of these people, believers, were deceived. Because they are after the signs in the events, in the succession so happened. They want to be sure when Jesus is coming, it is close now or will be later. They want to, so today, I want you to hear and understand many, with respect, servants of God and intellectuals in the prophecy or in the uh, university or, you know, in the Bible University, that try to mathematically <coughs> predict when is the coming of the Lord or very soon and things like that, it too long or very, very short. And because of that, people who are after signs, Negative, they are not prepared. Uh, but because of that, people, when they are after signs and events and the succession that's going to happen, many of these people will be deceived. I tell you why. Instead of preparing themselves for their stand to the Lord in their spiritual strength to God and their love to God, they are building their observation based on the signs of what the people says, and so they are sitting pretty. And very, very sad. Many of these people, when they're after sight, instead of thinking about their standing for God, many of them in the last days will be deceived. I tell you what, some, oh, no, oh, don't come here. And some of this, I hear from people that start getting, uh, some of them are a year or six months to get married. Lord, don't come yet. Because I'm not yet married. They're planning to get married. Look at the personal service. These are people. You cannot. I said, wow. Whether I'm married or not, come Jesus for me. That is the blessed time. Oh, the pastor, not yet. Not yet, not yet come. Not yet because I want to see the whole world. Can you see the selfishness of the human believers today? Lord, not yet. I want to see Spain. I want to see Israel. Thank God. I want to see England. Not yet. Don't come yet, Lord. Because the said said, these things will happen. So they are mathematically, what is the what is the oh, it's not long. Oh, maybe before I got before he come. They try to sustain the coming of God because of personal craving of their soul's desire to be fulfilled before the coming of the Lord. And they will be disqualified because the intention there is me, myself, my gratification, my, my things that I desire. When it is finished, I am ready God. I am getting ready for my spirituality. Many will be deceived. Oh, I'm not the Lord, you're not coming yet. In the plan of God, in the book of Revelation, there's the Lord Jesus come. But many Christians today didn't want Jesus to come. Really? What do you think is the reason? Can you guess what? They don't want Jesus to come back here right away. <laughs> you know, you can just. <laughs> what are the reasons? Okay? Oh, I want to reach the fulfillment of my earthly dreams. They want to see that. Which means the mind is you know, thinking about earthly and the desires of the earthly sphere. Basically, that's the devil and heaven world, lovingly, they are earthly, which means they the joy and their desire and satisfaction is not heaven, their satisfaction is the earthly kingdom. And this is very, very sad. Many Christians will suffer one day when the Antichrist come, they will believe the Antichrist because the word of God is being proclaimed. One day, they will never hear the word of God once the Holy Spirit is slowed down because grieving the Holy Spirit and, you know, grieving Him, one day, he is the teacher for every believer to know the Word of God. You will interpret the Bible based in human ability to interpret. But I want you to know 
their interpretation is based referring to what they know it is earthly, but without the option of the Holy Spirit, you can never understand what the Bible says. It's very strong. So, Christians, because of mathematical computation, they become negative. It's not in lazy. They become lazy Christian, comfortable, unconcerned of the work of the Lord. Oh, they don't care about the work of the Lord. If 99% and not 100 is the high grade, some give 1%, 1.5% to the Lord once a week. And everything is for some. See the Christian churches today, many are sleeping and some, some are dead. Pastor, can you prove to me that some people are dead? I give to you. Some are sleeping and some churches or believers are dead. When I say dead, there's no life. Book of Revelation, chapter 3. I think it's about service. Chapter as well. Okay, here. Into the church, chapter 3. Into the angel of the church in service, right? Chapter 3. This thing says he who has seven spirits of God and seven stars. I know your works, that you have a name, that you are alive, but you are dead. They do the work. They go to church. They give their offering. They sing to the Lord. They do work for the Lord. And they, they have a name, just a name, that they are alive, but you are dead, according to the word of God. And he goes to the uh, goes on to say, be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found your works perfect before God. So the word is being addressed here for Christians that are dead. Their heart is far from God. Their mind is far from God. They have their own agenda. And then the word that is given to the Lord week after week is not accepted. It's dead. Remember therefore how you have received and heard that was before. You become a believer. Hold fast and repent. You hold again to what you received before, repent, change your mind, go back to God. Therefore, if you will not watch, I will come upon you as a thief, and you will not know what hour I will come unto you. You have a few names even in service who have not the father garments. The only few who are wearing a white clothes of righteousness, Father, very, very big, Father, in the Lord. big city, very, very, very rich city. And there was a time when their money is made of gold. So, so, too much to enjoy. Big city, one of the kingdoms uh, that uh, Lydia, I think, the time. For they are not worthy. He who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments. So, repent to those who overcome and continue. You will have a white garment. And I will, okay, I will not blot out his name from the book of life. So, if they will not repent, the tendency, even they are Christian, because of their death work, it will be blotted by God because they are not obedient. To obey is better than sacrifice. So very strong message from the Lord. So I'm a Christian. It's okay. God can see the work. I'm sorry your work is unacceptable. I'm sorry you have no, uh, another affection on the earth to think. I'm sorry because you, I have no place in your heart. Only one person a week. And so we can say many will be deceived. But follow me on this line. And because in verse 4, because they look for the sign, we become susceptible, a target, to be deceived. What will happen? And this is happening today. They look for a leader or pastor with big churches as authority and believe everything the pastor or man of God said. I would advise you, you have to study the Bible by yourself. And see to it that the pastor or preacher preaching, you must follow in study what he preached. Because in today's time, it is not how big, how eloquent, how rich is the church. It is how they live like Jesus Christ and their life exemplify the name, uh, the word of God, very, very important. So, oh, his authority, instead of looking to Jesus and the word of God, they idolize the big churches and the world of men of God, and God is not happy with that. So they become vulnerable. If there is an error to their teaching because they are soft into their teaching, they can easily accept and receive that little kind of stain or some kind of 
What do you call that? <coughs> distorting the word, a little distorting of the word of God. Eventually, it will, you'll have a spiritual erosion, means with erosion, until one day, it will blacken your understanding little by little, until one day, boom, by their own teaching, because I look to a person, and because of his gifting ability, instead of searching the word of God of myself, and check, and check the teaching and the preaching of the preachers, whoever that man might be. Very important. Okay, do that. Research. Don't. Uh, no, no. Be, thank God for the man. I salute them. But don't follow a person because he is very influential. Lord, thank you for him. So check and look the, at the fruit of how he lived daily. I stick with him, walk with him. You know, if he stay with you for one week, you'll know a person if he is a godly or <laughs> what do you call that? Pretender. So, if a man is godly, even though there are some flaws and weaknesses, there, is, there are, you can see that man consistently, the heart and the love and the thought is more of Jesus Christ than the Word. Those are the people. Very, very few. Okay. So, <clears throat> they are susceptible. Solution, search the Word of God for yourself and check the teaching of these people, and I said already, never put your confidence in men. It is better to put trust in God than to put confidence in men, because anyone who put trust or confidence in men will be cursed. So I, I really looked to the preaching of these people. I researched the preaching and said, "Wow, oh, beautiful God, thank you." But never trust people because God is not happy. Always trust God. Let's go to verse five and verse eight. <coughs> Matthew 24, 5 and 8. Let's continue here. Here we are. Okay. For many will come in my name, saying I am Christ, and will deceive many. And just two, thought, uh, two comments or three comments, many people in today's time, and even during the time of the, uh, after uh, Jesus Christ ascended to heaven, there are many people, <coughs> three, four, five, big, big influence during the time in, in Rome, during the time uh, in Israel, I should say, that we, we pretend, they presume, I am Christ, I am the Messiah. Many of them, many Israelite people follow them, and many of them die. So there are people today who will say, I am anointed, I am Christ, I am the Son of God, I am the play of some any, any kind of false teaching. And so many will come in my name, and some will say, My church is the only true church. Is one of the tests of this false teacher is do they believe in Trinity? Do they believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and Jesus Christ is for men? You can see the false you, you can uh, no, if they are liar or false. If Jesus is more God, if Jesus is only man, Jesus is pure man and pure God. Thirdly, is the Holy Spirit is a, a person. To some of these people, very eloquent, the Holy Spirit is only power helping to prevent the word of God. So that's are important. And then salvation is only in Jesus Christ, not in their name or religion. Some of these four teachers to be Christian kind of teaching, but is if you are not part of your church, do you, uh, are, uh, do you think we have salvation? You said, no, you must look at it. the Bible said, they disorder but very eloquent. So if these people say that they are, the, they are the only true church and they are the right church, yeah, those are what they call, don't get closer to these people because they will save me. So here we can see succession is the nature of calamities coming and this is uh, social and political upheavals in chapter 24. Okay. And you will hear wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Nation will rise against nation, and kingdoms against kingdom. There will be famines, of course, and there are there is war or wars. There are wars, pestilences, different kinds of epidemic pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. There are just the beginning of sorrows. I want you to see here, when wars is 
happening in one country to other countries and nation against nation and famines is happening in many countries of the world, sickness and earthquakes in various places, these are the beginning of sorrows. The word sorrows is the use that is, the word that is used here is birth pangs, which means when the mother is getting ready to have that, that kind of pain, the succession of pain increases you know, every uh, maybe every hour, every 45 minutes, every 30 minutes. And that is painful. And then it's getting, becoming harder and harder and harder and very, very painful to bear. Well, which means when you see all these things lining up one after the other, the hardship of the world is becoming very hard to bear. In other words, there is a transition, a closer transition from this age to the age to come, as we observe this year after year. And it's becoming hardship in our life. We'll be seeing how money and how this nation, how nations of Israel is planned to be attacked by, you know, the target of the world today and, and, and how the Muslim attack, is, how Nigeria influenced uh, killing Christians in other places. So, there's a transition of hardship in our present time. And then later on, you can see here, uh, verse 24, and I give importance, and then I give uh, the sandwich, the most important message here in this important verses. And it goes on to say, then, because sorrows will increase, pain, uh, sickness, and there will, then they will deliver you up to tribulation to kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended, and will betray one another, and will hate one another. And then many false prophets will rise up, and they said many, again, they said many false prophets. And because of lawlessness, the love of many will grow cold. Now, you can see here in this few verses, persecution in our time. I want you to take note of this. Observe it every, every month and every year. Persecution to believers or Christians will continue to increase in our time. I want you to know that we are not majority in Australia now. Christian, we are minority. If you can look back 